Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Here are 10 tips for macOS Sequoia. Now, macOS Sequoia has been out for a little while, but there are so many new features that here are some you may have missed. First, when window tiling, you may want to split your screen between two different windows, but you may not want them to be 50-50. You can easily adjust the windows after you sign one to the left and one to the right. So for instance, you can select a window and go to Window, Move and Resize, and then Left, or use the keyboard shortcut. Or you could drag it over. I like using the Option key to easily drag it to the right side. Now I've got two windows splitting the screen 50-50. But if you move your pointer right in the middle here, it's got to be in the middle, a little too high or too low and it won't appear, you get this little handle that you could drag to the left or right and it will resize both windows so you can give one more space than the other. Now when you double click the title bar of a window, this area up here, by default what it will do is something called zoom. I'll do it here and you can see how it zooms this window up but it doesn't fill the screen. What it's actually doing is enlarging the window but only to the side needed to show all the content. In this case there's no extra space needed to display everything in the window. The same is also true in Pages. If you double click here you can see it actually shrinks this window but it's got everything perfectly fitting in. Making this window any larger doesn't actually do anything extra for you. But despite that you may want to have the window actually fill the screen and you can do that with the new window tiling feature. For instance I could drag this up to the top here and you see it fills the screen. There's also under Window Fill. But you can change how double clicking the title bar works by going to System Settings and then go to Desktop and Dock. Then look for Double Click a Windows Title Bar 2 and Zoom is the default and it will make it work just like it always has in macOS. But you could change it actually now to Fill. So double clicking the title bar will actually fill the screen. You could also change it to Minimize or Do Nothing if you find you accidentally double click the title bar every once in a while. Now hopefully you're already using the new Passwords app. It's just a convenient way to access your passwords. The Passwords Manager has actually been built into macOS for a while now. But there's another way to get to your passwords besides launching the app. If you go into the Passwords app into Settings, there's a checkbox here for Show Passwords in Menu Bar. Check that and you get this little menu bar item here and you can authenticate and access your passwords here in the menu bar without ever having to launch the app. It's handy for situations like getting your passwords for entering them into apps or for using browsers other than Safari. By the way, if you find these videos valuable, consider joining the more than 2,000 others that support MacMost at Patreon. You get exclusive content, course discounts, and more. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon to read about it. There are a lot of new features in the Messages app and people have been focusing on, for instance, the ability to send a message later. But you can also now style text in a message. You have to be talking to somebody else that's using Apple's iMessage system. But if you are, you can select text and just like with most other apps, you can use Command B for bold, Command I for italics, and Command U for underline. If you control click, right click, or two finger click on a trackpad, you'll see these here at the top. There's also another one that doesn't have a keyboard shortcut. That's strike through. You can also access these in the format menu. Now the Maps app has a great new feature that allows you to plan routes on trails so you can use them while walking or hiking or backpacking. But you can also use this feature in urban settings. All you need to do is click and hold on a spot where you want to start and then it will bring up this window here. Now if you click Plan Route that's going to plan a driving or regular walking route where you give it two points and it will give you a route to follow. Instead of doing that click the three dots here and then choose Create a Custom Route. Now you can see here you've entered into the Trails mode. Now you can click on various spots. So I'll just click here and you can see it links the two spots. I'll click on a spot far away like this. It will plan a route. I'll click on another spot like right here and it will route to that. You can even click on the original spot again and I'll ask you if you want to reverse the route. Do Out and Back or Close the Loop. And now I've got this handy guide here. You've got now your altitude chart here. You've got times and total distance. And you could save this. Now you can easily access this custom made urban trail on your iPhone and use it to direct you while you're going and show you how much distance and time you've got left. A big new feature of MacOS Sequoia is Math Notes where you can type expressions 
in the notes app and then it will give you the result. But here's the thing, you could do this almost anywhere you can type text. So for instance, here I am in text edit. And if I type 2 plus 2 and then equals, even though this is a plain text document, you see the result there. And pressing return will add the result in. It doesn't have all the advanced functionality of the notes app like using variables, but you can do basic math expressions like this. Here is it in pages. And I can even use x instead of the asterisk for multiplication. You could even do it here in the messages app like this. And you can see it gives you the result there right in the message. Now you probably already know about Reader View in Safari. You can get to it by clicking on this button here at the top and then it will say Show Reader. You will even get an indication usually saying Reader View Available if you go to a page that has an article on it. But sometimes you are at a page and it doesn't tell you there is a Reader View version available. If you click here there is no Reader View available. People have been saying, well, Reader View doesn't work on all web pages now. But in fact, both of those indicators here in the address bar and here in the controls are just trying to advise you as to whether or not it seems like Reader View could be used on this page. You can actually still use it even if it doesn't show up here. If you go to View, you'll see Show Reader is still active and you can use the keyboard shortcut Shift Command R and you get Reader View for that page. Now, it may not work great on that page. After all, Safari itself didn't think it was a good candidate for Reader View, but you can force it to Reader View if you like. And once you're in it, you can use all of the different controls to make it easier for you to read. Now, in iCloud settings and system settings, if you go to iCloud Drive, you may or may not have optimized Mac storage turned on. Having it turned on allows you to actually have more files in iCloud Drive than you have space for on your Mac. So a lot of people use this if they have smaller hard drives but a lot of files. Now if you have this turned on, subfiles you may have available cached locally like these here where others like the ones with this indicator show that the file isn't cached locally and available in iCloud. If you have a connection that's usually no problem. But if you're offline you can't access these until you're back online and it could download and cache that file. Previously there was no way to ensure that you had a file offline if you are using optimized Mac storage. But now you can. Control click, right click or two finger click on a file like this one and select Keep Downloaded. Now we will make sure this file isn't removed from your local cache. So the next time you are offline you could be assured to have this file or even an entire folder full of files available to you. Another new feature of macOS Sequoia is the ability to bring up the context menu without using your mouse or trackpad. Typically you would either control click on an item like this file or you would right click on a mouse or two finger click on a trackpad and it brings up the context menu. But now you can do it completely with just the keyboard using control and return. That brings up the context menu for what's selected. Now it's important to note that it's what's selected not what's under the pointer. So if I move my pointer down here for instance, control clicking, right clicking or two finger clicking here will bring up the context menu for the desktop since that's what the pointer is over. But using Control Return will bring up the context menu for what's selected which is this file. You can use this in apps anywhere you select something. So if you select a word for instance in Pages you can Control Return and it brings up the context menu for that word. Then of course you can use the down and up arrows to select something and return to activate it. Here I am in Photos and I can use the arrow keys to select a photo, then Control and Return to bring up the context menu, then the arrow keys to select something, Return to activate it. If it's not working for you, go to System Settings, Keyboard and then Keyboard Shortcuts. Then go to the Keyboard subsection here and look for Show Contextual Menu. This is where you set what the keyboard shortcut is and this is where you can turn it on or off. Now before in FaceTime you could certainly share your screen but now you've got the ability to share specific windows. Matter of fact you can share all the windows in one app or even windows across different apps. So for instance I've got FaceTime active here with my iPhone. Let's go ahead and share this window. I could go here to the controls for the camera and you could click here to get window sharing controls and I can click on the window I want to share. That's one way to do it. Let's share this window but you also see I can share all application windows for pages. So now this is what I'm currently sharing. I could go into this window here and click this button 
and you could see how I could stop sharing it. I could also go to another window here and instead of using this control I could go to the green button, just hover over it and see how I could share this window as well. Now take a look at what I've got. I've got two windows here, the Pages window and this Finder window and both of them are being shared. I'll bring the Pages window to the front. You can use these controls on FaceTime but also in other apps. Anything that uses the standard controls here. So there are a bunch of different things you may not yet have tried with macOS Sequoia. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.